let's let's dive in first and foremost. We've got a very, very brief winter phase to go through. We're not going to go through all the super complex details about your manners because this is a short campaign and that would be a waste of time. <laughs> so uh, let's let's level up your characters. So first thing you want to do is open up your sheets. And for each thing that you have a check in, you're going to roll to test against it. So you're going to roll like each skill um trait and um passion that you have a tick in and if you fail the roll or you critical or you fumble then it goes up by one okay let me know if you critical and i'll tell you what else happens all right uh you want to go first dale that way we're not running over you, each other. You can go first, it's fine. Alright, uh, I'm going to start with traits and just go from there. Sorry. Uh, um, I missed the box, that's why I was letting you go first. Ah. Uh, Rough. Did I succeed? Here's all your good rolls. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Yeah. This is not when you want them, that's for sure. Oof. Oof. I mean, these were the only skills I succeeded at the entire time, so. All right. Like, we did a bunch of awareness. I didn't succeed once at awareness. Mm. Hey, I hey, failed I one. Hunting. There you go. I go up in hunting. Okay. Uh, battle. Hey, there you I go. failed battle. I am now famous for my battlefield command. Oh, fumble. It's okay. It counts like a failure. Just take it. Yep. Or just bring it up one. I mean. And. Okay. Not bad at the end there. You got the some important ones. Hunting and battle are pretty good ones to fail. So, same with horsemanship, actually. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's let's continue on. We're gonna go to. Is that all yours, Brunus? Do you have any impassions or? I traits? have no other. I I have already rolled those. Okay, got it. I have rolled everything that I that I succeeded at the last game. It's not bad for one session, actually. Um. <clears throat> okay, let's see for Sir Esphorus. Um That would have been a hard one to achieve. Nothing there. Oof. Heraldry twice? Probably misclick. Probably. And that was it. No, Where this was the last one. He will yeah, never I didn't have miss. Nothing on her passions uh, or traits. I failed all my passion stuff, or and my traits. Like I didn't succeed on anything uh, of those, and I rolled them a lot less than Barunas did. Uh, like I was, I was, I rolled a lot of awareness, and I kept getting it. So that's why. Or didn't, that's why. Didn't both of you fight one versus two at some point? Yes. You would have both had a Valorous take for that. Yeah. Oh well. So you get okay. That was worth a try. <laughs> we're we're already well, as Valorous as we're. Yeah, you're not exactly. 
Like, not I could have sworn you also rolled reckless. I thought so too, actually. Oh, is, um... That... Can that go up? What's yeah. that? It's at a five. You're reckless? Oh, sorry, 16. No, I rolled... Re I had reckless in battle. That's probably what you're thinking about. So it just, uh... Oh, yeah, I directed trade. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but that's I right. Could, I, that was reckless. It's all good. Yep. All right. So now you get to choose to raise something. You can raise an attribute. You can raise a passion. You can raise a trait, like a virtue or vice. Um, all by one. You can raise a skill that is 15 or greater by one, or you can get a pool of five uh, points to put into skills under 15. Oof. Like, like part of me wants to just get my appearance back up to 18. But I know the better... The better play is raising my intrigue, flirting, or raising my compose for bonus to everything else. True. Tough call, my friend. It is. It was All much right. straightforward. I was like, what would this guy focus on? And it was very easy, unfortunately. Uh, what did you, what did you go with? He went with the sword. He is very oh, much a sword guy. Yeah. Kind of established that in the last session, didn't we? A little bit. I don't know. I think the only time he used his sword was when he dropped his lance. Yeah, but that's standard. He would, he would lead with the lance first in as a knight. Get into close range and then and then when you're not yeah, charging. Yeah, if we hadn't been on horseback. Yeah. If we hadn't been on horseback, he would have definitely had the sword out first. It was just unfortunate for the other guy that he ended up using his better. He was like, hey, I, I've been left-handed this whole time. Essentially <laughs> on the guy. All right. As... as as much as I would love to raise my uh, spear expertise to 18, uh, I believe I just, I've got to shore up some of these courtly skills. So, five points. We're going into stuff. What do I want? Okay. Put two here into entry. another one that's actually really important. Let's go with Compose. Alright. Two went into Intrigue. Three went into Compose. So mm -hmm. he can... He can... If, if given a forewarning, he can flirt and orate and be romantic. But he's not good at it off the top of his head. There we go. Right. Just looking at one thing here. I 
Okay, and uh, what do you guys recall about where you were headed next and what you were doing? So we were on the road with Sir Nicholas to... I want to say London. Londinium. To ask King Uther for soldiers because... Dira has uh, imported Saxons from the mainland, and they are poised to raid us into oblivion during the next summer. And we do not have the manpower or military might to push them back. Um, well, I, um, I would like to argue that we do have the manpower because you just got to check out these guns. But I guess the person people, yeah, we probably don't have the manpower. <laughs> but yeah, we were supposed to go to the capital, right? Just to play nice to these at the very least. I'm not sure if we actually were on the road yet. We just planned to do it. I know we were on the road, but we really didn't have much time to talk. It, it was basically, and we're on the road. Um, I did take a moment after the king gave us these orders to basically ask him if he wanted to instead come to London to personally ask. Because this is the same thing that uh, Uther did, and we sent his envoy back with nothing and there is a good possibility that Uther will do the same because yeah. uh, Uther your, is just that you recall that he did answer you there right oh yeah he, yeah. he made a valid point that he can't because if he leaves now it looks like he's running away and right now his people need him to not look like he's running away. So he needs to be there. He needs to be orchestrating that. Okay. Didn't say he didn't bring up a good point. I just... Oh, no, no. I'm just making sure you re recalled them that he provided yeah. feedback there. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to start with this map and we're going to put you on here as the envoy. From Melahat. And so it's the two of you and Sir Nicholas. Yeah. Uh, um, before we dive in, is there any anything that either of you want to do to prepare? Um. So one thing about Barunius is he doesn't necessarily think about the um about Eagle Crest, it's not on the forefront of his mind. Okay. So, you know, he he let his family know that he's been ordered to uh, London to ask for aid. And, uh, yeah, that's about the best he would do. Okay. What about, uh, Sir Esphorus? Anything from you before you leave? Uh, mostly just to keep an eye out because we our lands the lands that we had were raided, so we just gotta make sure we have more patrols going that way. Okay. Just security in general. Um, go ahead and give me a battle test. Low numbers. Low numbers. Low numbers. Yes. All right. Woot. <clears throat> so um you prepare uh, some of the, the knights um, right near and, and around Burakum, um, both the ones you, the ones that owe you fealty as well as the, the ones that would be like your peers and plan regular ro rotations of patrol. Uh, so with a positive effect, it means it's a positive uh, response. Okay. 
So with that said, uh, on the road, um, you'll be passing into Linden first. And because Linden is like the border between Melohut and Logris, uh, you would be expected to check in. Uh, do you want to do so? Um, of course, but before we get there, I do want to speak with uh, Sir Esphorus and uh, Sir Nicholas. Sure. At so. All right, we can start with that scene. Um, you're all on the road. I think you just passed through, if you recall from the last session, there was a Bernie town down here. <laughs> uh, Wintering House. You recall that? I believe Wintering House was saved. It was, but there was damage first. There was raiding yeah. going on. Remember, he smelled smoke before he got there. Yep. Yeah, we got there very close to the after raid party. Yeah. yeah, very much so. So you, you went through Wintering House, um, and I'll spare you the details there. It, it just, people are recovering. Resilient commoners trying to put, put it back together. Um, the noble house that was positioned there is destroyed. <laughs> the manor's gone. So. I do try to, like, if, if I recognize any of the faces that I saw before, I do try to check on their well-being when we pass through. Okay. Anything you want to do, Brunius? Um, Brunius is very much a act first sort of person, so if there's anything he can physically do, he will actually physically do it. So, the, so if the... people are struggling to lift something up or, or write something, he physically gets down off of his horse and helps them. Okay. Uh, so the biggest the biggest question I have here is you have a, a loyalty to achieve this thing that Sounds like it's of urgent manner. Are are you both willing to stop at Wintering House and assist, even if it's for an hour or two? Or are you trying to blow out of there as soon as possible? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not willing to stay the night. But I am willing to lend aid as we're passing through. I guess that's the best way I can put it. And that's, is that the same for you, Uh Yeah, the king's assignment takes precedent above all, but he wasn't, like, right through the night, so I would be fine with, like, an hour, maybe two, of helping them and making okay. sure they're okay for now and then heading out. Okay. And is it your, your concern for them and, and, like, your humanity side that's playing through here? Or, or what is what is driving you to? I guess. Uh, this... more of a uh, noble obligation. Okay. It is. It is our duty to assist those under our protection. These people may not be my people, but as a knight of the realm, I am responsible for their protection. And as such, I am. I am expected to lend aid to them when I can. Okay. So it's very much a uh, noblesse oblige. I believe that's how you say it. Got it. And what about what about you, Esphorus? Esphorus, it's different. It's mostly because he. He actually saved them and physically he was there to save them and yeah. he wants them to know that it wasn't just oh if knights happen to be somewhere and they just fight the Saxons and that's it it's more of a he wants them to know that if a knight's there he actually cares about you people and not just fighting the enemy or just like just to let them know that knights are there for it's such a, like when a cop comes by like you see cops whenever there's an emergency but mm -hmm. you also see some videos of cops where they're helping out the community or just doing small things that aren't necessarily life threatening. Yeah. And I just and he wants them to have the feeling that they can rely on a knight for anything rather than just an emergency. Understood. Okay, so um, I'm gonna have both of you 
uh, tick something. For uh, Bernius, I'm going to get you to tick Honor. And for Esphorus, I'm going to get you to tick Generous. All right. Is that I mean, fair? I am physically Anyone, honorable. Any, any disagreements with that? It's not that one's not or less honorable. I'm just thinking what's driving you is, is important. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's pick up with the scene after you're kind of exiting Winter House. It's moving into the evening now. Um, it's early spring, so it's still like winter cold out. <laughs> you know, it doesn't feel particularly good up here. There's still a little bit of snow. It melts during the day and it kind of freezes at night again. Uh, Sir Esforas, Sir Nicholas, if I may, I would like to have a word. And I'm trying to have this word like away from the rest of the rest of the guys. This is the knights having a word, the leadership having a word. This is not meant for rank and file. Of course. Sort of thing. Yeah. 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 So well, your entourage is pretty away. small. Outside of like oh, the squires yeah. and pages, just a three more or less. So Yeah. Oh, so the moment we're far enough away, uh, S Forest will say, No, I do not think that Maid was getting on you or trying to <laughs> become closer to you. She just what? honestly seemed interested interested in rebuilding her community. Oh. I uh was actually trying to hope you two would form a connection. Anywho, that's not what I wanted to talk about. Uh I know our orders are to do our best to convince Uther to lend us his army. I also know Uther. I know his character, and he will not lend us his army at all because he feels he was slighted. Surely his hate for the Saxons is greater than his pride. And also... It would, if he is so prideful, he might actually grant us this benefit just to promote the fact that he was willing to do this, and we were not. From what I know of the man, that is not how he would think. He would do unto others as they would do unto him. However, I do think we have an alternate way of doing things. Asking Uther for his army is something we absolutely have to at least ask. But I have no doubt that he will deny us. So I think the best opportunity would be to recruit volunteers from the other knights. See if we can recruit volunteers who would be willing to come and fight with us against the Saxon Raider. So long I do as he agree with that not, plan. So long so as does not mean... Sorry. I only have one objection. I don't think we should go in there with the mindset of failure. I think we should hope for the best, but also have your plan on standby. I suppose I would agree with Sir Esphorus here. It's important to trust that the king, Centurion King, knows what he's doing. Uther's proven valuable in the past. We just recently rode by Mount Damon, after all. He has rode north once before. And sent yeah. an envoy again. I know he's been wounded, but it would be... Foolish to not deal with Nohat and Dira right now. We have an opportunity, and 
If a Burakum falls, Linden Pool is next. But at the same, you're talking the to his boy, time. so he's uh, <laughs> uh, he drinks. No, uh, I am. Yeah. I am all for. Just letting you know, Nicholas drinks the the Kool Aid, right? He, he's a oh, big I've fan. Mar yeah. I have marched out with Uther and Merlin at least three times now, and I'm I'm full on the Uther bandwagon, but Nicholas I'm also is a not. Nicholas is on the Centurion King bandwagon. Oh. Just to, just to clarify. So if the Centurion so, King says we need to go down and this will work. That's where he's at. I, I am 100% loyal. Or I am I am super loyal to the Centurion King. But I'm also like drinking the Uther Kool-Aid. Like he is the proper high king. Do you say but that? We are... No. Okay. But I, I do... I do say that, again, Uther marched north because Lot was marching south. And to have the high... Have Uther refuse to bring troops while Lot was bringing troops would have looked bad on him. But I am no diplomat. I am merely a soldier. You, sir, are the expert in these matters. I just... I apologize if I have overstepped. It's not wrong of you to think what you're thinking. There is a chance and a risk that such a king as Uther would be too prideful to see this. We must hope and pray that that is not the case. Well, thank you for taking the time to hear my concerns. Um, I just wanted to touch base, make sure we had we were all on the same page before going into court with Uther. That way we're not working against each other oh and i agree we should all we should always have an exit strategy uh, because the first plan of attack does not necessarily always work even though i know i'm reckless on the battlefield i understand that in court we have to be more cautious so um sir nicholas as you have the most experienced with the courtly affairs, I will be taking my cues from you. He nods that. Very well. But for now, we are roadside. And I believe the both of you have more experience with such. So. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Uh... Unless you feel like camping here, I'm pretty sure we could get a few more hours ride in before we have to stop for the night. He looks at the two of you. Yeah, we should keep going. Uh, right. Are there actually travel rules in, in Dragon? Just a side note. What's up? Are there travel rules? Is that what you said? Yeah. It's yeah, a... are there travel rules? No, not like not can not not base rules anyways. There's bolt on things, there's traveling in the forest, getting lost in the forest rules, there's all kinds of things. I've created my own plays just from experience. Um but in general I might force you to test energetic if you try to ride through the night, right? Um I, or reckless or you know, things like that might apply, but it's like typically, you know, um, traveling, you're going to go about, um, I think it's like 12 to 15 uh, kilometers on a horse a day is what a standard ride would be. So there, there are some like 
scales and stuff on various maps that show how far you're going. Um, okay. Yeah. But generally, because the the novels that this is based on are somewhat abstract, the game doesn't like to prescribe. It's yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, so continuing on, right? Is is the goal? Uh, at can... least until it gets yeah. a little further into the day. Okay. All right. So. So as you move into the evening, uh, I'm going to get you both to test either hunting or awareness your call. I will throw my hunting. You know. Hey, I succeeded. All right. As you start to, you're continuing down the main road to Lindenpool, which is the safest way you could go. But as you're traveling, um, and you you reach an, another off trail, the though you're not traveling through forest, you're fairly close to the forest line, and um, I think it's Barunis. You can't help but notice um, some noises from the forest. Um, Something about it, your instincts, your familiarity with hunting, you get the sense that there is, and you can take hunting, by the way, there is perhaps an ambush in tow about to go off on your envoy here, if you're not careful. So, I'm going to ride up close to, uh, their necklace and I'm just going to sort of casually but quietly ask the question so uh what would you do per se if uh suddenly we were under attack oh Leo come here and I have Leo like retrieve a spear like my spear from the pack. Barunius, what are you doing in response? Or as as for us, I mean, what are you doing in response to Barunius doing this? I start actually looking around and being uh, trying to prepare myself, but um, I make movements to the other, like uh, subtle gestures that we've probably trained our other followers that they need to be alert. Okay. All right. Like, like I'm trying to warn Nicholas that this is about to happen. To because he's already said he is not combat oriented. So, hey, yeah. here's a heads up. This is about to happen. What is it you would be doing if this were to happen? Oh, by the way, Squire, can I get my weapon? Yeah, he he picks up what you're going. What, what's going on here? Nicholas will. Being the highest ranking of the three of you, you will fold into a defensive position. Um, and with that, uh, they're going to get sort of a, like a first round on you because you're not charging the line or anything. There are a couple of javelins that fly your way. Uh, four to be exact. Um, and we're going to see who gets... Targeted out of the three, you actually. All right, so one to Brunius and three is for us. Um, because you, you know, if you want to spend your action just riding, you can use horsemanship encounter if you want to kind of try and ride out of range of the javelins. Um, alternatively, you can press forward into attack range this round. So, Barunius, oh. what are you doing? Uh, Barunius. Honestly, Barunius would, um, coordinate with everyone else to set up battle lines first. You don't have time. 
I mean, oh. if you do that, if you do that, that'll be your. You will neither be within range nor be able to dodge the incoming blow. As long as you're okay with that, you can you can certainly try to organize. That, that's a valid topic. I shouldn't say that. It, it, all I'm saying is, you will miss out on the opportunity to do the other two. Are you okay with that? I am okay with that. Okay. I know it's coming. But the men need to be ready to go, so I will take the hit to make sure that the soul to make sure our our envoy is ready for battle. It misses anyways. <laughs> uh Esphorus, what do you want to do in tow? Because you got you look like you look up and you see a wave of javelins coming your way. This is perfect. Tell themselves the best defense is an all good offense i'm going to try to close the gap okay. and hope and try to move my horse and hope i'm trying to get it to move faster to where they were they're probably aiming for us so i'm trying to get to where his javelins don't necessarily go straight right right they, they, they arc they yeah. come in an arc yeah. so i'm trying to get the ahead of the uh, ahead of the arc before like the arc goes down essentially okay all right um do you want to split your horsemanship amongst the three? Or do you want to just roll it to to avoid one? Probably have to. Uh, and this counts as a battle. I think I might uh, try to get a... Oh, I can't do any uh, pack. Can I can't do any passion for this? Can I? You can. Yep. You can invoke a passion okay. if you want. Cool. Then I will invoke honor if I can. Okay. Go ahead and give her. Woot! All right. Now, how do you want to split? I'm going to split it eight and seven. So that should give me 13 and 12 out of the two. I'm just going to have to hold the third one. Misses. Eat the third one. Okay. So, uh, the first one coming your way misses. <laughs> uh, but roll just in case there's a fumble. You're still going to have to roll. Okay, you're good. So you kind of glide right out of the way um, as it sails overhead. The second one. Question. Yep. It counts as me rolling. It counts as me having a zero, right? Uh, against this attack, the first one. I thought you said you were going to eat the third one. Oh, yeah. No, that's what I mean. Is this... This, am I, I'm rolling against this. Okay, so the first one missed me, but I still roll against it, and I'm not rolling against the third one. Correct. Yeah. Sorry, I, I misinterpreted. What was no, that? no, it's okay. Yeah, okay. So, so the first one he just had a lousy roll, but because it's contested, you know, there is that one in twenty chance that something went wrong for you as you were moving about, right? So. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I got you. You well. get to uh, click your horsemanship since you succeeded. Yeah, you can take your horsemanship. I'll allow that. This is in the middle of a battle, so it's important. Um, and then the second one coming your way. Misses again, but I do need you to still roll horsemanship just in the off chance that it backfires on you. This could be like, we, we can get descriptive on what that might be. Again, you succeed. So that's like a, a very cool scene of you maneuvering out of the way and then sort of mis... mis um, misjudging your direction as you as you veer the other way and you start heading straight towards them. The third one comes sailing at you and misses clean overhead. So it seems like your diversion tactic worked uh, and you were able to ride in and close the gap. Uh, 
uh, do I see who these people are attacking us? Mm, yeah, you can. You see from the tree line as you get close, very clearly Saxons, just in their dress and garb. Um, you did hear that they were kind of out ravaging the countryside of Rostock and everything else over winter. Could very well. I mean, they've got they've got additional numbers, so they could be just harrying the road. Uh, so, um, you see, the even the javelineers that wasn't their primary. These are. These are ambush tactic Saxons. Um, the they each of them, um, now that their javelins are gone, uh, you can see that they have um, melee weapons to close the gap. Um, but we're gonna start with Bernius. Just give me one sec, guys. Give me one second. All right. Yeah. Hey, can you still hear me? Is everything okay? Yeah, I everything's can hear you, no okay. Problem. I'm back. Okay, cool. I'm just making sure because I was like, "Hey, uh, so what do you think about this fight?" And then just silence. Silence. I didn't oh, hear that. I, I did not hear that. Yeah, that that was cut out, but I can hear you now. Okay, um, good, 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 good. Okay, Brunius. <clears throat> yes. Um, back to the next round. You can see that there are um, five Saxons in tow versus the three of you. Or, or yeah, versus the three of you and your squires. Um, but from your distance, it's really hard to see, especially in the evening, who is what. What do you want to do this round? Um, so now that we now that the rest of the envoy has been organized so that they are ready now i want to go ahead spear in hand charge forward and uh charge into the enemy is the sun down or is it like uh still setting it's setting right now uh, do we have the sun at our backs at all, or no? <clears throat> um, no. Um, actually, yes, because they're fighting you from the eastern flank, <clears throat> and it's going to set in the west. So yes, it would be at your back. Okay, so that should hopefully impair them as we charge. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm definitely going to go into the fray. Like, well, I, I'm probably already in the fray. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think your charge is probably no longer a charge, <laughs> but you're right in there, and you can pick your target. So we'll get into that in a second. For Brunius, um, I think you have to be a bit more random because you don't you're not able to like see from from your position and them in the tree line um, who your target is. Is that fair? 
Okay. Yeah. Um, pick a number between one and five. Four. Ah, uh, great, wrong. great spearman. <laughs> Unfortunately. Oh well. All right. You keep running into those guys. I do. I know. Well, to be fair, the Saxons aren't mounted typically, so that is their counter to knights. <laughs> I um, mean... I, I've got the mental image that when Baronius gets knocked off his horse, he, he goes great spear as well. But, uh... I hate Saxons. So would you? So would I be allowed to roll my? Uh, yeah, go for it. Ah, let's see if this works. Yay! I hate the Saxons. That gives you a plus five bonus, sir. Yep. Uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Uh, since. I can't fail. What happens when I go above 20? Did you make note that you don't get the plus 5 for being mounted because they have a great spear? Yes. But I do get the plus 5 for being impassioned. Mm -hmm. And my spear expertise is at a 17. Okay. Um, in that case, you... Um... <clears throat> you just can't fail. But you can still succeed less than they they succeed if that makes sense okay yeah here we go Ooh, that wasn't good but they failed oh yeah cool. all right go ahead and give me your damage Oof. 21 before armor um, dex test. Let's see. Okay. <clears throat> they remain standing. Okay. Uh, but you, you carve into him, uh, or pierce into him, oh, yeah. deep with the spear. <laughs> um, he remains standing, yep. though. Like, he's not Oh, that's down. fine. Yeah. Uh, Esphorus. Your action. You can see your enemies. Um, you see three of them have great spears. One remains with the javelins under, you know, beside them. And the other is a shield warrior. Do, in, do any of them look particularly uh, more authoritative than the rest? Um, not really in this group. Kind of looks like uh, um, fodder compared to some of the groups you faced. For lack of better speaking. Uh, in, that, in that case, I'm going to go after the javelin thrower and the shield man, uh, warrior. Okay, the two of them together? Okay. Yes. How do you want to split? I'll split 10 on one and 10 on the shield guy, nine on the uh, javelin guy, but I'm in passion, so it'll be 14 and 15. 14 and 15, okay. <clears throat> Um, and the javelin, just to remind you how they work, they don't get to contest your strike, but they get to go first. And you can't contest their strike unless you split and use horsemanship. Do you want to split a third time against them, or no? Or do you want to just eat the javelin? That's do I how... need to split horsemanship or split swordsman or my weapon? Oh yeah, good point. You'd split sword, sword, swordsmanship a third time to avoid the javelin. 
It's kind of how ranged weapons work in this game. Like, they get first strike, and so you have to split a special time against them um, if you want to dodge their missile attack. And then you get your melee attack against them as a separate action. Okay, then it'll be definitely 14 against the uh, the shield guy, and then 10, 10 and 10. Wait, no, because it's 9. Not, uh, it'll be 10 and 9. The 10 mm -hmm. will be for his attack against me, and then the 9 will be to attack him. Okay, so Javelin fires what we'll do first. Um, let me just see something. Cool, so that'll be 10, 9, 14. Cool, cool, cool. All right, uh, he misses outright. <laughs> um, but we'll still get you to contest it. All right. <clears throat> next thing next, um, do you want to target? It's your turn to attack. So you tell me who you're attacking and go ahead and make a roll. Uh, that was against the javelin guy. Right. Okay. Uh, so, and then the last one will be against the shield. The shield guy gets contested. The javelin near does not. Um. Uh, Shield Warrior misses too. Apparently, you have shit opponents. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, yeah. It's good because you're outnumbered. So cool. So I think I got two hits then. All right. So go ahead and deal uh, damage for both. damage to the javelin here and 20 damage to the other one uh the javelin here has almost no no armor uh so he will drop the shield warrior takes a deep gash but remains standing uh, that's good uh he lasts longer than the other pair that i fought and I'm glad that, and I want, mostly wanted to take the javelin guy so he doesn't attack anybody else that's trying to come in. Right. So the javelin air drop. Um, the shield warrior remains standing. And contesting S for S right now. And the, um, who's the third? The, the Javanir fighting, um, Brunius remains. Or the Spearman, sorry. Um, so that leaves, um, three other opponents. Two of them are going to move to charge on foot, keep in mind. So it's going to take them more than a round. They move to charge uh, your back line and charge uh, your um, Sir Nicholas. And then the last, the very last one. Um, see who this is. Another spearman. Um, 
this one moves to attack um, one of you two in the front. Uh, looks like Brunius. Okay. <clears throat> Misses. Man, these guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Um, it this seems that... D &D, you'd be on fire. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Okay. Top of the round. All right. Uh... I am engaged with two guys. I am impassioned. So. I'm at 17. Uh, we'll do nine on the spearmen I've already hit. And uh, eight on the spearmen I haven't hit yet. Got it. So, uh, we'll do the 9 first, so 17 minus, or 9 minus 5 is 14, so that's a minus 3. So the guy you have already hit is who you're rolling against first? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Alright, I hit him with oh. the 5. He beats me with the 6. Oh, rough. He barely got you. That was pretty. Yeah. That's a pretty close hit. Yeah. Uh, fourteen, but you get to apply your armor and your shield, so nothing. Uh, I do have to make a deck safe because that is higher than my. That is my knockdown. Um, you're on horse, so it's actually horsemanship, not dex. Ah, okay. Yeah. Horsemanship. Cool. Hey, crit, right. or not crit. Would hmm. have been a crit. But, but you remain crit, no standing. Way. That's important. Yep. All right. Um, and then on to the next opponent. You still get to make your second attack. All right. And this one is minus four. And I miss. He misses you in turn <laughs> with the All exact right. same numbers. <laughs> what are the odds? Um, the so, yeah. although we rolled the exact same thing, does that mean we both drop our weapons? No, only if you tie uh, success. If you both succeeded in uh, tie, then your weapons would break. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. And then it's for us. Well, it's just straight up uh, fight with the guy I'm fighting. That was a shield warrior, yes. One D three. Yeah, it's just, I'm only fighting the one guy, right? Yep. He yeah. succeeds, which means you can apply his shield, but you succeed greater. So, you get to deal damage, and he just gets to apply his shield. Not a lot, but you dealt pretty good before on him. So you did 20 plus three minus um, seven. So <clears throat> he's wounded, he's staggering a bit, but he remains up. All right. Basically say that you are lasting longer than the others based uh, recently, and I appreciate your efforts. Ah. He grunts at you. 
Roman pig. All right. Um, not the best. Not the best. Uh, Nicholas is unhorsed by the opponents he's Ooh. facing. All right, we move into... My strategy might be changing really quickly now to go help him out. <laughs> um, all right, um, let's, let's move into the next round. So we've got everyone's remaining. The board hasn't really changed other than Nicholas and has been met face to face with his two opponents uh, who managed to unhorse him and, and deal damage. He remains alive. Um, he's just wounded right now. Oof. All right. Um, I still have two people on me. You do. It would be very hard for you to pull back and yeah. do anything right now. So, um, so yeah, I'm just going to same nine and uh, eight into the two I've got. The one I've already hit is going to be the nine. Okay. And then the fresh one is going to be the eight. I understood. All right, uh, go ahead and give her. That is my attack. Okay. He succeeds, but less. All right. All right. 11 um, more damage. And you got him pretty good the first time. Yes. Uh, let me just see what you did. You did horse damage to him the first time, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, I believe it was 21. Okay. He is definitely a hurting unit. Um, but not down. Not down. All right. Uh, then the fresh guy. And I missed. Ooh, he hits. Um, let me just see what I did, because he applied damage to you before. Five. He applied. Ooh. I. Oh, fuck. All right. Ooh. That hurt. Yeah. Uh, minus 10 is 16. And what did you take before? Pretty small amount, or nothing yet, right? Zero. That was your, yeah, that was your first. Oof. Uh, I may be doing absolutely nothing for the rest of this game. But I'm not unhorsed. All right. You, you managed to stay on your horse. What are you at for health? Ten. Okay. Like, he did... He he took me down from my max to ten in one hit. Yep, and it, the worst part is he would only take in ten damage if, if you didn't fail your swordsmanship. Or your spear. Yeah. Right? yeah. That so is correct. So you didn't correct. get to apply your shield. So I took sixteen instead. Yeah. Uh, Barunius, your go. Or as first, I mean, your go. Okay. Uh, at the moment, I'm going to, since this is happening at the same time, I'm going to assume that I'm too distracted by this really good shield guy I'm fighting. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so I'm just going to go for him right now. Because I'm, I'm, like, in, in fight mode. Roger that. I forgot. I have a on the horsemanship or, or on horse bonus, right? Too. You do plus five. Did you not apply that before? Cool. Yeah. I haven't been applying it. All 
All right, good. So he succeeded with a shield, but not a critical, which is what I was worried about for you. Okay, um, so I'm pretty sure you're about to finish him off. Let's see what you do for damage. Oh yeah, oof. <laughs> Six and then what did he take before? I wrote it down somewhere. Right there. Eighteen is what uh, minus thirteen plus. He did. He drops over. You, you managed to run your blade right through his neck. Yep. So hot. Uh, and um, I, I can't move yet, right? Um, that's pretty much what I was doing for this span of time. Correct. But, I mean, you can cinematically, you're, you're turning to move and try to ride out to help Nicholas. Is that the plan? Uh. Uh, Nicholas, or um, it, to be honest, it depends on who gets hurt more at the end of this. Because Nicholas still has to go to see if he got seriously hurt again as well. Okay. So the good news is Nicholas remains standing, um, but he's almost he's getting wailed on, and one another wound manages to come through on him. But he still remains standing as he tries to fend off these two two Saxons. Okay. Um, so at this point, unless Baronius calls out for aid because he's still on his horse, I'm going to be going towards Nicholas. I uh, would I tell you to go towards Nicholas. All right. All right. Uh, let's okay, let's cool. see. We're so we're making helpful. we're making the death defying plans. It's, uh, I understand it though. So loyalty All thing. Right. All right. So uh, nine and eight. I hit. Let's see him score higher than that. Misses. Woot. Yeah, he misses. So you get to deal damage. I and... deal eighteen more damage to him. Yeah, and that should do it. Yeah, that does it. So he drops, you're left with, uh, you drop another opponent, or drop an opponent, and you're faced with the fresh one. Oof. Uh-oh. Uh ah, oh, he misses! <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Alright, uh, it's not the best of blows, but it, it gets through his armor. Um, yep. <clears throat> and you're left, more importantly, you're left one-on-one -on -one with someone. All right, so uh, I think in this case, uh, we go to Espress. Are you are you choosing to try and... What are you trying to do here? We're already clear that he wasn't really a combatant knight, so I'm going to take one of his opponents away from him to even things up. Okay, understood. Um... They're both fresh, so you can choose. Oh, are they both the same, or are they different, or the same type of? They're, they're they yeah, they're both spearmen. Okay, then yeah, I'll just grab either the one closer to me, narratively. Okay. You'll the first one you'll lose your mounted bonus on this one. Cool. Yeah. Go ahead and give me your attack, and I'll roll his counter as he turns to try and base the spear against you. Uh, Impassion gives us uh, the same amount as the being on horseback, right? Impassion depends on what your passion, how high your passion is. 
Yes. No, if, if you succeed, the track to passion yourself. Sorry. It, it just depends on um, your level of passion can apply different, like different scores. Um, here, I'll just transfer it over to this map. You know what we'll do is we'll just we'll move over to. No, we'll stay here. Give me a sec. I'll just bring it over. Basically, what was your what was your passion score? Uh, it was 15, I believe. I'm pretty sure all mine are 15. Okay, so plus five. Yeah. Oh, nice. He succeeds, but it doesn't matter because he doesn't have a shield. All right, give me your damage times two, sir. So 30 damage still. Yeah, he is down. <laughs> you drop him in one hit. <laughs> 23 damage through his armor. Sir Necklace, are you all right? I see after just riding in and essentially just murking blow to the back of that guy's down. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, Sir Nicholas does his best to fight in the exchange. He is not wounded this time through, uh, but he's not able to overcome his opponent. You can see like a lot of his clothes and his armor is stained red. All right. Um, and next round, Brunus. All right. I, uh, ha I, ha I have uh, cleared the other guy away. It's time to focus on this guy who has been whooping my butt so far. So I will... Attempt to dispatch him post haste. Understood. And remember, you actually you're only you're not splitting this time, so you actually get your full score. Yep. Which is a huge boon for you. Um, and of course, I rolled a four. Yeah. Oh, you rolled a two though. You got oh, him. There we go. Yeah. Twenty-two. Ooh. And a good roll. Uh, uh, he is barely standing. He's staggering as you manage to clip him good with your spear. You can see the red start to ooze out from under under his uh, armor. And back to Esphers. Oh, oh, how are you at minus one? What? Um, I haven't heard anything from from Esphorus, but he rolled sword versus a threshold at nineteen. Last time he had twenty, so just want to make sure that. Yeah, was... it's. Uh, I forgot to put the plus five in there when I hit the roll. Ah, so it would have been a critical then. Yeah. Yeah, it should be. If, uh, like, my the roll 20, oh, it's being slow right now, so I don't actually see the roll. Oh, the last okay. thing I saw was Bernays' is 22 yeah. damage. Yeah, you roll a 20 versus 19 and it listed as a fumble. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. Oh, no. Um, I, yeah, yeah. I, sh I should have technically a 24. Yeah, so, that yeah. makes sense. I, I'm the one who caught that, so it's fine. We'll keep your roll because, I mean, you just forgot your modifier. It's okay. Um, why don't you do double? Well, I, I got to at least roll Casey crits too. Um, he misses entirely, so okay, just double damage for you. His computer just dropped him. 
Oh yeah, it's okay. Um, there he, him, he's back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I was just ref refreshing the page because I'm trying to. It wouldn't let me even see my character sheet. Ooh. Understood. All right, seventeen damage uh, times two, thirty four damage minus seven. He is down, and I think that leaves us in a one on one situation. Burnus and his opponent, right? Yep, I. Or did I say you dropped him? No, I didn't drop him. Yeah, that's right. There's 21 damage right now. So he's very close. He's staggering. Not the way to drop him. Yeah. All right, go ahead and give me your roll, good sir. All right. What the heck? Uh-oh. Oh no. He crits me. At least you succeeded, right? You can still try to shield? Yeah. Um <clears throat> I don't think Bernius you well, you haven't used your mulligan. Um you get one a a year. I would highly recommend you do. I am going to it would uh turn your success to a critical. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Okay. So your crit will beat his crit, and you'll break his weapon. Uh, and my weapon, because I'm nope. not using this. Oh, yeah, yeah. You will break both weapons, however, that's good for you right now. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, better, yeah. than, better than trying better to eat 5d6 times 2. Yeah. Um, when you have 10 health left or whatever you have. All right, keeps you around. Yeah. Um, Lucky. One. Oh wait, no. Even if you rolled out ones, that's still ten. Yeah. I just realized that. So. Okay. Uh, what do you What do you do next, Brunus? I think you're, you're. Um. I believe it's uh sword time. Okay. Like. Out it's comes time the sword. For me to break, it's time for me to break out the sword. Because my, uh, my spear just got broken. Unless I can use a broken spear to beat him to death. No, really. No. Okay, <laughs> um, you could call for your squire to bring you another spear. Uh, you would have to test their squire, which would be 15. When do you, you roll a d20 versus their age, and then if you succeed, your spear is brought... Leo, little Leo is eighteen. Eighteen, sorry. So yeah, you could you could test that if you wanted. I could. But no, I'll go. I'll You're start go. sorting. And okay. Um. Okay, go ahead and give me your attack roll of the sword, sir. I succeed. He succeeds, but less with his hand axe that he pull, pulls out from his belt next. And as he goes to strike, uh, you succeed, and that's going to be enough. So 21 plus 13 minus 7. He is down. So, uh, that was... That was... That was a clutch sword roll. Am I good to <laughs> click my sword or check my sword? What's your skill? 12? 14. What? Oh, okay. 14. Uh, yes. If it's under famous, uh, definitely. I'll give you a check on okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh. All right. And, uh, Nicholas, you can tell, is in a lot of pain as he drops to a knee after this is all done. Sir Nicholas needs 
the first aid more than I do. Fire coming to help him, or um, do we need to apply it? Uh, his I squire, mean, his squire would probably move to help him, um, unless we want to do this like cinematically and give one of you a chance. Do either of you have a high um, first aid? I'm sitting at ten. I didn't learn much beyond being a squire <laughs> for first aid. I was too interested in hitting right. people yeah. more more so than mending them. Uh, I think in this case, um, you with a 10, you can do it. You're in passion, Brunius, though you're not in great a great spot yourself. No. Um, do you want to let but... the squire do it? You know what? I'll, I'll I'll go for it. I'll go for it. Hey, I'm I'm healthy and fine. I'll go for it. I'll help Sir, uh, Sir Necklace and then um, Baronius if he needs it as well. I think Baronius, you can have your squire do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Stop the bleeding. Yep. All right. Both successes. Uh, what you can tell us first is Nicholas has definitely taken like a major wound. He needs to see a surgeon. Uh, and your best bet from here is probably the Ninpool. Okay, then uh, just we gotta ride hard to get there. Yeah, um, you're uh, you're, just, you're close, get ready. but you could have one of the squires take his horse in tow and um, bring him, or you could um, guide his horse for him. He's like conscious, yeah, but uh, he's pretty delirious right now. I'll have the squire do it, and then try to like we're gonna have to be at a quick pace. To, yeah, we're more um, like even if they drag behind, I'm going to count on the luck of God that we won't have any more ambushes and focus more on trying to get our whoever is known narratively as having our the fastest orbs to try to get him. To lend to lend in as soon as possible. Okay. I think it would be interesting because you just fought under duress, even though I as far as were you even wounded at all? Uh, no, I am perfectly healthy. I'm yeah. Yeah. did not get hit. Like give I almost got nice. hit by some javelins. Yeah, give me an energetic test real quick. Like, I got beat like I stole something, so... There you go. You can take energetic. I think you, the answer is you're the fastest horse to go cinematically right now, given the situation. Uh, do you want to take Nicholas ahead? Yes, I will be taking him ahead. Brittany, do you want to try and keep up? And let the, let the rest of the uh, retinue follow suit. The squires I can tell I am going to stay with the retinue because somebody needs to stay in charge. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right. So with that, um, we're going to go to a, a very minor kind of interaction with his forest. Um, as you reach the gate of the Ninpool. It's definitely set with defenses targeted towards this side of the road. <laughs> right? <laughs> Keep the northerners out. Um, and as you ride in, you can hear the guard from the other side. The vertical is. Say it's your business. We were ambushed by Saxons. Open the gate so this man could get medical attention. <clears throat> uh, there's a pause. And who are you? I am Sir Esphorus of... Shoot, I forgot hey, how to Burkham. pronounce our city. A Burkham. Yeah. Uh, here as an envoy of the... Of the not king, it's uh, yep, king, it's king. 
King Haru, it's King Haru, but I, we have a special Centurion King. King. Centurion King. Yeah, the Centurion King. Okay, so this, he uh, he goes. He mutters something. Give me an awareness test. He mutters a slight. He calls you a northerner, right? Um, in a very derogatory fashion. Uh, and there's definitely a suspicion in his eyes that you can see through this porticulus. He says, and you've mentioned that you're a dip, you're a, on be, here on behalf of the Centurion King, right? Yes. I, I mentioned that. Yeah. Did you mention th this is um, like Nicholas? Have you mentioned any reference to him? Who the wounded man is? I didn't say his name. I just said we're we're an envo envoy from by the king from Avergum, and okay. we were ambushed by Saxons. So that's it. Okay. Uh, Because like time is of the matter, I think it would be interesting. Um, you're noticing that he's dragging his feet on an answer. It's like he's debating. So I think I'm gonna give you like a moment to think about how you might reply to that. Like think of a, a situation where you know you need to move and the person's just stalling on you. That's what's happening here. Uh, I guess in anger, uh, yes, Forrest would say, if this man dies because of your dawdling, I will personally come back here to duel you and kill you. All right, that's fair. Um, what are you famous in for weapons? Uh, swordsmanship, because it's okay. at a 19. Go ahead and test that for me. Oh, interesting. Now, we're doing the same scene, though. Like, I haven't established, so you actually would have succeeded at sword. So, um... Okay, cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought it had passed. So, no, no, it's all, luckily... it's, it's all good. Um... <clears throat> uh, I'll, I'll let you know when the, the passion wears off. It'll be basically entering Lindenpool. There's a look, like, there's a brave and sort of, like, a sizing you up look on, your fa on his face, and then finally he grunts and says all right just don't get blood everywhere i don't want to clean it up and with that uh, uh the protocols begins to raise you are let inside we're gonna move forward if that's all right um with both of you I right. yeah we uh like it'd be interesting because all one moment He's coming in. I will fucking kill you if you don't let a, if this man dies. And then a smaller force or a small force rides up. Hi. <laughs> we got ambushed by Saxons over there. Right. I'm Sir Brunius. These are my uh this is my retinue. Can we come in for the night? Uh test courtesy for me. Uh, am I still impassioned? Despite the fact that these guys aren't Saxons? Ah, uh, yeah. Alright. The hate can be seen on your eyes. Ooh. So I fail. Okay, I so it's not that you're not going to get entry, it's that you get run around for a while. You know, there's a long, a lot of delays. Like, picture the worst border guard you've ever had to deal with, that, that kind of scenario, right? Yeah. Um, um, but eventually, you're let through. And uh, 
the better part of the night, Sir Nicholas is left with the surgeon. I mean, I think it'd be good to bring the two of you together for a, a small bit of a scene. Now passions are worn off. Uh, just to discuss what your next moves are. You know that you'll be let in to see Sir Nicholas once um, the surgery is done. And the two okay. of you find yourself in sort of the the bailey of Linden Pool um, in the town town area. Uh. So, how is Sir Nicholas? You have as much knowledge as I have. He will be, hopefully he will be fine, but there's still some time until we can visit him. Okay. Uh. Oh. Do you also need to go see the physician? I should be fine. Just a little, uh, Just, just rest should keep me alive. So, Sir Nicholas looks like he took the worst of that. He was knocked from his horse, and we do know he doesn't have as much experience as we might in the battlefield. Hopefully he can recover enough to show us his experience in court. It's my fault. I knew the ambush was coming. And I... I knew it was coming and I... Coming and I still couldn't... Couldn't stop it from taking him sometimes I think e4 has it right to think before he acts I've always considered it hesitation to act in the face of battle but Today, Sir Nicholas almost died because I was too, too forward in my thinking. If I'd have held back, protected him, rallied the squires and the rest of the retinue into protecting him, he would not be in this situation. Well, I don't think it's specifically your fault. Every battle's different. Things happen. Blades move through the air. Javelins are thrown. It's just luck and when you're unlucky. Of course, experience can help, but he was unlucky. But he was lucky enough to survive, and we made it here. So it should be fine. Shouldn't worry about it that much. It still weighs upon me. Whether it's right that it should weigh upon me is... immaterial. To whether and... of whether or not it does. At that point, um... <clears throat> you hear a voice. Uh, someone clears their throat. <clears> throat> Mm. 
I turn. It's the surgeon. Nicholas is stable and awake, though in a lot of pain. We have given him what he we can to lower the pain, but he will not be fit for riding. Not for some time. Perhaps uh, the two of you would like to visit. Yes. Of course. And with that, uh, he says, uh, this way. And he guides you to the room where you find a very injured Sir Nicholas. There he is. He wouldn't let Saxons fell him too easily. He smiles. Well done, the both of you. I, it could have gone a lot worse, I suppose. I'm... I'm still here. After all. The, the both of you... You'll have to complete what we started without me. I'm not sh I'm not sure we can. I'm afraid there isn't much of a choice in this. To turn around now and send for aid, we may miss the opportunity. You're right. I, I beg your forgiveness. We... My place should have been... We both knew that you were not a combatant, and yet it should have been my duty to stand with you and protect you. I am a knight. You were the mission. I am a knight, a sworn sword to the king, and I am fit for death the same as you two, just less practiced these days. You did well, and the mission carries on with the two of you. I leave it to you, your choice. If you wish to set out in the morn before meeting with uh, the Duke of Linden, the Duke of Lindsay, then I, I understand. Still, Duke Corneas may not appreciate such a slight, but I will do my best. If instead you wish to treat with the Duke, I would recommend that you do so first thing so that you do not miss many hours in the light. It would not do to slip in to his holdings in the at night and slip out before making ourselves known. Nicholas's eyes go to S for us to see if he has an opinion on this. It's would it would make us ungrateful if we did not at least show face to him. So I am fine with us spending some time here. Especially after I did threaten their doorman. <laughs> he laughs. <laughs> and he kinda of holds his side like <sighs> Well, never liked some of them down here. Seem to be pretty biased our way. I find we're treated better once we get through the Duchy of Lindsay. All 
right. With that, uh, should we skip forward to the morning? Uh, the meeting with the Duke? Or anything you want to do first? I mean... Brunius is not necessarily the most uh, spiritual of people. I mean, he only really know he only really has a religion of two, but he would he would pray for Sir Nicholas's swift recovery and guidance upon what has to be done now. Okay. Because he, he blames himself for Nicholas's injuries, so he is asking for guidance from, like, if any of the clergy are up at this hour, he would be talking to them, asking for, you know, how does he work through this? Okay. Sort of thing. Understood. Um, well, Brunus is doing that. What is uh, Esphorus doing for the remainder of the night? Um, he's seeing to the rest of their uh, the men that followed us, making sure that they've got what they need and that they're good to go. Uh, overall, even though Sir Nicholas was fairly injured and he saw Br Brunus uh, being also injured, but not quite as heavily, he considers this a win uh, for all of them as they lost no one but wiped out all the Saxons. So he actually doesn't, it doesn't hit him as hard as the, for the events that happened as it probably does Brunus. Mm -hmm. But so he's just going about it normally. Um, I think we're going to get Esperus to test modest. And uh, Brunus tests spiritual. Hmm. Right, you both can add a tick to that. So as for as your um, your sort of modest um, servant, you know, serving the servant kind of attitude is is well taken. Um, by the retinue, and they seem encouraged by it, despite losing uh, Nicholas in this. Um, for Esphorus, you have a great conversation with one of the uh, brothers of the cloth, the clergy. Uh, you're a British Christian yourself, right? I believe? Yeah. And so that's what they are here. Actually, hold on, let me make sure that's the case. I just want to check one thing. It just changes the narrative and won't change the outcome. <laughs> they were a they were a pagan church all along, right? I mean that, like, honestly, that would be that would be cool. <laughs> I would be down for that, but uh, no, it's not quite that. Nothing that crazy. Uh, just let me see. This would be. Just consider the Saxon shore. Forget. Uh, no, it is not. Okay. This would be Midlands, and I guess. Just looking it up in the old Bookaroo. Book, oh Book of Sires. Bookaroo? Yeah. Book of Sires. Uh, Midlands. I don't know if that's the right place either. Let me just see. No, that was the Saxon who used Roman as a derogatory. Oh, there we go. Linden are a British Christian. There we go. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, I was right about that. Um, his guidance is that tomorrow is Sunday and, um, he encourages you to 
um, to enter a, a service of worship before setting out on your heroic deed, um, which won't waylay you wrong, um, or long rather, won't waylay you long. Um, but I think it does waylay you a little bit, um, but you're encouraged by it. Um, I th what I'm gonna do is something interesting. I wouldn't. Nor this isn't like a normal rule. It's not like something you can trigger multiple times. But I think it'll be fun and give you more of a fighting chance. So on every Sunday, you heal your healing rate um, because of the spiritual success. I'm gonna give you a uh, healing rate times two back. Okay. So what's that put you at? Is it, uh, it that would heal me six, putting me at sixteen. All right. Well, that's much better. Leaves, leaves you a fighting chance for the rest of the journey. All right. And uh, with that, um, why don't we start the scene with the two of you and Duke Cornelius. He looks at the two of you there's a slight bit well uh give me intrigue Tess. hey i boosted this recently yeah. i still failed but i boosted um, it does law still count this yep. or is it oh, it does okay cool damn i should have had you do law roll when you were trying to get in the city too that would have made a lot of sense I um, I'm too busy wondering yeah. if he's upset about the whole threatening to kill the door, uh, doorman thing. That's fair. That's a it's a good way to approach it. Um, but he just uh, looks at the two of you. <coughs> I hear that your lead diplomat was nearly slain by an ambush. Is this correct? Yes, sir. You, what's your name? You must be the talker, he says to Sir Brunus. I am Sir Brunus of Eagle Crest Manor of Ainsley in Malahut. And then his eyes go to Sir Esphorus. And you, Sir Knight? Sir Esphorus, um, Esphorus of Abercom. Ah, I'm Roman. A little bit of disdain in that. <laughs> well. Uh, my men said that they heard that the... Um, my men said that they heard you were going to London, but they also heard you were going to the king's court. Which is it? We are heading to speak with Uther at the... At the king's court. He nods. Well, if you were headed to London, you'd be going the wrong way. The king has moved his court for the day. He is on his progress, after all. Of course. You'll wish to go to the Duchy of Glebum, the County of Clarence. Do you know the way? No, sir. I have not been myself. Um, out of character, is this lines up to norm? This sounds normal, right? Ooh, I'm gonna let you choose what you're testing to compare it against. What what are you what do you wanna test? Either a trait or a skill that would represent your approach. Um would probably be I don't, I'm not sure if uh, courtesy is the right thing. Um, doo -doo -doo. it's not awareness. It's um, 
So intrigue would be like probably the, the equivalent skill okay. to try and dig to understand the context. But you could apply like battle or like, um, or, um, not trusting, uh, uh, suspicious, you know, depends on what you want to do. Okay. Uh, I'll go with suspicious because, like, um, he did, like, throw out the whole Roman and with the hard R. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Me. So, <laughs> okay. Like, I just want to make sure he's not. Yeah. Not that he's like sabotaging us overtly, but like he could just be like, "Oh, why I for I got bad info." Yep. Okay. Uh, all right. Apparently, I love sixteen. So, <laughs> so it would be rather dishonorable for this guy to, especially a man of such high station, to misdirect you. Still, I think. It seems what what you kind of get to the bottom of with that is it feels wrong. Like why Clarence? Why you've got the Saxons covering the whole eastern shore and you're gonna go west? Seems weird. Seems like a weird time. Mm -hmm. Okay, I still I stay silent for now. Did the two of you know the way? I do not. If there was any way you might have a map that you might be willing to share with us. Or a guide you might be willing to part with for our trip i would greatly appreciate it but i would not wish to impose upon you further than we already have the use of your surgeon and entrance into your domain notwithstanding you have done much for us as it is already you sir need to courtesy test on that one Um, can I test honor? I think, do, what is your hospitality right now? My hospitality? Yeah. Do you have a hospitality? Should it's have. a passion. Uh, 15. Hey, test that for me. All right. Okay. You're appealing to his sense of hospitality here, so you can roll your courtesy with that in mind. All right. After all, you're under his hospitality right now. And he's offered you much. Um, but technically, uh, given the situation, well, let's see. Let's see how it goes. Am I impassioned? Plus five. Okay. Nope. Okay. I dang near uh, fumbled on that one. It's okay. I think this this is just describing. It's not a fumble, first off, but it's not a success. No. So he says, "Our hands are tied ourselves with the Saxons, both to the southwest and to the north, or sorry, southeast and to the northeast, as you much know." I have a question for the two of you. What purpose has you riding through my lands? What do you wish to bring to the king's attention? King Harut would ask for assistance from Uther in regards to the new reinforcements that the Saxons have brought in just this past summer. Quick question. Were we informed to not tell this to anybody you were not okay you were also yeah. kind of hoping that your sir nicholas would do the talking so this has been an interesting yeah. turn of events i actually like where this is going better <laughs> yeah um as a player i want to say don't tell him anything but his for us wouldn't necessarily care specifically yeah We're not fighting with swords so Arunius would look at it as 
Malahut is the first line of defense. If the Saxons run through Malahut, he's next, and he needs to know what's coming. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think his response is simply, um, you know, it's funny. I hosted court not long ago here. The king was present, and he sent an envoy north to Malahut, seeking an alliance. I believe it was a centurion king who failed our King Uther at that and now but a short time after he would send his own envoy here to request the same I brought the same news to him myself the same uh, inquiry okay at this point though yeah. as first is aware enough to make sure you don't say that okay what do you do to interrupt that'd be funny uh as he's about to say the next part. You can see it in his eyes. <laughs> um, if his forest says, yes, that was, that was, um, our king has grown wiser in his experience, so he under he has seen the situation in a new light. So he has, he is hopeful that Uther has, uh, also grown and we'll see thing, and will give us the not benefit of that. I don't want to say benefit of that. He, he also he hopes that Uther will see God's grace and extend a hand, even though a hand wasn't necessarily extended towards him. I'm sorry about that. No worries. Give me a law test. You are the talker. I'm just a pretty face. May I impassion myself with yep. loyalty to my lord? <laughs> yeah, in this case, yep. I'll buy that for like what you are literally just doing this for right now. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Um, I'm going to give you a tick to law and Brunus. I'm going to give you a tick to honest because that was hilarious. Like you're just going to be like, I tried to tell him myself. <laughs> I think that's great. I, um, I brought that up to him myself. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I like that. So you guys can have those ticks. Um, he pauses and nods. Very well. I will prepare a guide then for the two of you. They will show you the way. Though they will need your protection. <laughs> Allow me but the rest of the morning to see this through. And you will have your guide. Uh, that is actually perfect. We were... Is today Sunday? Yep. Yes. We were going to attend the church service. I see. He looks surprised at that. Uh, you. Um, sort of a bit of suspicion growing on his face. But then he looks to Brunius, uh, Brunius and nods. So, so when he looks to Brunius, when he goes... They will need your protection. That 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 look of just sort of not fear, but like dread. Like he has already failed at this once, and now he is being asked to do this again. Kind of hits him. And right. That and when as far as is uh, mentioning that, and he looks over, may, you know, he's got that sort of he's looking at that understood understood all right okay so um i'm gonna give you both a minute i'm gonna step away for one minute i, I think are you guys both good to go for another 20 minutes yeah yeah okay I have we'll, nowhere to be tomorrow. We'll go for another 20. I got to go right at 7.30 my time. Um, but I'm going to step away for two minutes. Quickly get some more water. And then uh, we'll we'll finish up with another scene. But if you guys want to replay, you can. Otherwise, feel free to take a break. 
So I guess opposite of Cerunus, uh is Forrest is um, 100% confident in being able to protect this person. Yeah, Bar- Barunus feels as though by with Sir Nicholas being injured the way he was, he has failed in his duty. Mm-hmm. You know, he is he is known as, you know, one of the sword arms of the Centurion Knight or a Centurion King. He is just to a fault honor honorable and a master fear fighter and the way he and an and a famous general and he still could not afford himself or uh, could not accord him could not do anything You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I understand. So. I. My friend. Thank you. I was close to speaking out of turn about the king and your clear head. Has it's fine. <clears throat> Though, I understand that you're, you are second-guessing yourself at the moment, so it's, it is okay. But some, but for now we should just try to, or at least you should, uh, seek guidance from the Lord on, during this next, uh, during the sermon so that you can be reinvigorated on our journey forward. If the Lord did not will us to continue and live and fight as we do, then we would have died in the ambush that you pointed out. Had we all, if we had been all caught unawares without you, there's a greater chance we would have all gotten worse than what Nicholas got. But because you were aware enough, that did not happen. And Sir Nicholas is still alive. Thank you. I will have to think on this. It's... You are correct. My... My mind knows that there was... that... there's not much more that either one of us could have done to prevent it. And yet my heart still... And yet, I still feel the responsibility for it.
All right, <clears throat> I'm back. Sorry about that, guys. I'm all, all set good. Up. Cool. All right. I need from you a um. Choose one person to roll a d20. Or, actually, sorry. Um, from both of you, I will need a um, a hunting roll each. Hunting can be done. And I failed. Okay. I'm no longer in passion, right? It was just for the one roll. Correct, yeah. But we like 17 in this house, apparently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so... Um, I need one of you to roll a d20 for me. You could. 15. Uh, just mapping something out here. And the um, map. How do you want to travel? So there's a couple different ways. Um, well, let's start with the guide because this will be more interesting this way. Um, the the guide. Um, her name is Lady Gwen. She is. Um, a cousin to uh, Duke Cornelius. And her father is a um, aging um, um, household knight in Lindenpool. Um, she has a 17 appearance. Um, and she is kind of looks a bit proper for the road. Um, what are your, what are Brunus's and Esperus's thoughts when you hear, when, when she introduces herself as your guide? Um, uh, and we're aware that she's his cousin. Yeah. Okay. She says, my name is Lady Gwen, cousin to the Duke. I'll be your guide into Clarence. I feel honored that the Duke would entrust us with your safety, and I will do my best, my utmost, to make sure that we get to our destination safe and that you are not harmed. She smiles. So, the fact that she is a woman actually does scare him. Like, he is already blaming himself for allowing Sir Nicholas to get hurt. But now, now, he's, now he has a, now a, a lady of the court. Lady Gwen? He is actually... Like, there, there is a... Like... He, he doesn't smile, but he, he's not rude. But there right. is a, a concern on his face. Understood. Uh, she pulls out like a fairly crude map. She says, We have two ways we could approach this. One is uh, the main road down to Lambert Castle through Learstown. If you'd wish, rather. We could make our way instead. A bit of a detour through Bedegrin. I would advise um, the main road, she says. Out of both ways that she's advising, have we heard any like rumors or talk of either of those ones being... Uh, more frequented by raids or by 
taxes or just anything out abnormal. All right. Um, law for you, folklore for Burnus. So I am very much concerned about her safety. Uh, could I roll hospitality or... Hmm. I'd honor like would apply for honor. that. If, yep. Honor? Yep. To, to... Yep. All right. I failed. Ooh. Oh, and you got a 16. I don't think that means anything, but let me see. It might mean you're melancholic. Let's, let's find out. More melancholic than I'm already? Right, than you're already. Well, then... You'll officially have the status. Yeah, of you'll officially have the status, yeah. Uh, 16 with a failure. Give me a d6 plus 5. Six. All right. So you are melancholic for six days and you lose one point of honor. Oh. So his passion just permanently goes down? Yeah. So you, um, to go, I guess. Yeah, I think this is uh, if I if I could recommend something your way, I think you look this face in the eye, you know, straight in the eye, and you say, "I'm gonna fail her like I failed," you know. Yeah. Um, and that that fear I, really sinks in with you. Like, like, I think we need to stick to the main roads because if we deviate, if there's even a chance. That there is raids going on off the main roads. She's going to die and it's going to be all my fault. Meanwhile, did I... Yeah, understood. So what what you would grasp is the direct route. Where are you guys positioned? What map are you on right now? You're on Cumbria still. Okay, let me move you over to the NBC map. So I can give you a general idea. Um... The main route would be something like this. So you go from Linden to Lozenep to Lambor, Orensis, and then into Clarence, right? Um, the risk with that, um, actually, sorry, uh, Lozenep into Tribute. Um, in, and then into there. So you'd be traveling more along the side of the, like the center of the Midlands. The risk you have there is that you know that that is actually not super far from Carewent and Carecolin, right? So it'd be a lot like riding, riding through Malahut. There'd be risk of, of Saxon raiders for sure. I think that's what your law would tell you. Um, going the other way, going through Bettegrin down into Lambert, so it's a bit of a you know bit of a workaround into Orensis and then into Clarence. You'd be hugging more the, the eastern shore, which has or the western shore, which not western shore, the western border rather, which has its own perils um, because there are mountain men um, from uh, from the west. But your experience with the mountain men tells you you'd rather deal with mountain men than Saxons <laughs> on the field. Saxons are actually quite fierce as, as enemies. Um, so frying pan, or not frying pan, uh, rock and hard place kind of scenario. Um, choose your poison. Would it be quicker to go through better green? Or are they both the same? Uh, so barring, barring no challenges, going the main route would be faster. Okay. Mm -hmm. But go they're just... Um, Either like main route is faster, but the other way has weak is not weaker people, but uh, easier challenges to overcome if we go the other way. I, I think yeah, I think you'd worry probably about specifically the threat of the Saxons is very near and dear to you, so um, not worry, um, but that might that might choose your path for you, right? Is whether or not you want the risk of facing Saxons, or if you'd rather. Um, 
roam the countryside with less likely less opportunity the and there's another note i'll give you because you passed benegrin used to be part of the north so it would give you you would have better respect there they were northerners until uther decided that benegrin he was angry at the king of benegrin for not bending the knee and he conquered it a couple of years ago that's uh, for, mine now <laughs> yeah conquered it killed the king replaced it with a account with some claim to the the better grain lands kind of thing okay well if sir if Barunus Barunus uh voices a concern about safety I I tell him that we should probably take the we should take the main road as there's since there are plenty of we know there will be Saxons whereas the mountain men will be easier to deal with if we go the opposite way all right uh, but it would be easier ahead. to protect her but we do uh um, do i need a do i need to test against something because we like if going this if going straight there is faster the other way i do i might have to test something to make this choice actually um hmm interesting um I would very much say take the safer route. Uh, okay, I know what it mostly fall seems to fall under under traits. Uh, what do you want to test? Uh cowardly. No, nope, we're gone. We got it. Our king wants us to go the main route. She's suggesting we go the main route. I could probably take out more Saxons if we go the main route. We're going the main route. Okay. It's fast, full of danger and excitement. Just like uh, <laughs> as far as okay, pretty much was. Unfortunately. Brunus, are you going to object or melancholically agree? Or like, you know, reluctantly agree, I guess. Obvious. So, so he looks as though he might object only to second guess himself. Okay. No, you are, you are certainly wiser than I am. We should go with your... We should go with your route. Lady Gwen says, Very well then. Through the main road. Um, I will see you at noon, and we can depart then. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Do you have any, any people you're going to bring along with you, or will you just be bringing yourself? I could request service of a knight. Is, is that? Oh, no, I meant. Um, your your lady, ladies often have attendees. Ah, uh, my so. yes, my attendees, of course. Um, but one, I won't bring the whole retinue with me. It's not necessary for this. Okay. Uh, very well. Uh, we will meet you. Uh, at. Was it morning, noon? Sorry. Noon. noon. Yeah, yeah. No, yes, noon. Very good then. We will meet then. All right. Uh, so that will close out our second episode of this. Um, going to hold on to you folks for a minute and just keep you back. Is there anything you wanted to add before we close? Uh, nope. No, actually, I had a lot of fun. Awesome. I got to be all melancholy because I failed. Um. All right, so we will begin again uh, next week with our third episode.